This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. We have an LG dishwasher that's making a lot of noise during the wash cycle. So it's fill, it fills fine, but then once it starts to circulate the water, it's really noisy. So we're going to uh, replace the circulation pump. It's pretty easy to do. We're going to get these baskets out, the bottom basket and the top basket. And these circulation uh, pumps are pretty inexpensive on the LG dishwasher. So we're going to be removing a couple of screws that are holding on the lower spray arm, two Phillips head screws. Once you get those out, you can lift the spray arm straight up, get that out of the way. And then there's a series of Phillips head screws that we have to remove here on this bottom filter on the sump. We're gonna spin those at our off, house when we do our dishwasher. It makes us sleepy because we always go to sleep at, at the time we run it. So it's kind of like a like a lullaby. <laughs> yeah. So I think the circulation pump um, bearings are probably shot on this one, and that's why it's so loud during the wash cycle. So we also want to remove this. Um, upper spray arm we have to kind of bend back on some clips that are holding it there's a clip at the top and there's a clip in the back and I'm just using a standard head screwdriver to kind of pop it out of the clips once we pop it out we're going to be turning it to the left and then we can lift that whole spray arm out of the way We just have to dig into the dishwasher a little bit here to take a screw off of the impeller so we can then remove the circulation motor. So taking out these little screws that are holding on um, this part of the sump filter and we're going to pop it up with the standard head screwdriver and then we can That's see the phone. impellers, that round little gizmo there. <laughs> We're going to go righty-loosey righty rather than righty rather than lefty-loosey. So it's opposite threads. So when you turn clockwise, it'll loosen it. Let me get that out of the way. And then we're going to pull up on this lower assembly. Come straight up towards you. And then there's also one little thing in there, <clears throat> a cutting arm that goes on to the impeller shaft. And then we just lift that thing straight up. And then that part of the disassembly is done. Now we got to get the um, dishwasher out of the cabinet and turn it on its side. So I'm turning off the water, removing the water line underneath the sink. I'll remove the drain line. <clears throat> we'll make sure we unplug it or we turn off the breaker. Then I'm going to remove the bottom panel. <clears throat> just two Phillips head screws holding that on. And I'll get that panel out of there. And then you may have to lower the legs to help get your dishwasher out of the cabinet. And there may be a couple of Phillips head screws holding in the dishwasher into the cabinet. In this case, there was no screws. All I had to do is pull the dishwasher out. I grabbed the uh, top part with some pliers to help <clears throat> you get the top part out and we'll go let out. Oh, from frozen. And once I got the dishwasher out, I just laid it on its side. You may have a little water spill out here, so it'd be good to have a towel ready. And then on this model, you have the circulation motor ex exposed right in front of you. So you're going <clears> to <throat> pull off the motor connector. And then there's just a few screws holding it on. There's an outer plate held on by four Phillips head screws. So you zip those off. And then there's four more holding on the circulation motor. This plate just kind of protects the motor because uh, it basically sits on the ground. And again, these motors are fairly inexpensive. 
So if your machine is not washing very well anymore because the motor's worn out or it's getting noisy, pretty easy and pretty cheap to replace these things. So you got the protective plate off and then there's just those four screws holding it on. Here's the new motor. As long as you have the model number, you can put it in a Google search with the term circulation motor and there'll be a lot of companies that will sell it. It's interesting, the one that we got actually had kind of a frozen, that's where we're going to put the new one in, <clears throat> had like a frozen shaft. So some of these companies aren't that reputable, but I would, I would definitely get one that's uh, not used. <clears throat> and uh, get it from a place like maybe Sears. Our reliable parts are really, is another really good company. So we're just putting the new one in. We're gonna put the four screws <clears throat> that hold it to the sump, and then we'll put the protective cover on. protective cover <clears throat> that has the four little Phillips head screws. We can see too that um, there's other parts of the dishwasher that are so easy to get to. We can change the fill valve very easily. We can change the diverter motor. We can change the drain motor if you needed to. There's also a, a thing called a line filter <clears throat> that has a fuse. So if your dishwasher has no power <laughs> You can get to the line filter really easy when you have it on its side like this. So there's really not many, many things to do to get the circulation motor off. Don't have that much disassembly. Making sure all the connections are good. Put the motor connector back in. Make sure it's solid. All the modular connectors are tight. We're going to get it back on its feet and then push back into the cabinet. And, you want in. and then we'll reconnect everything and put it back together. Probably take you about 40 minutes to do this whole job. It's a nice looking to we got the drain line, I'll hook that back up to the disposer. Hook up the water line again, make sure it's tight. Turn the water back on, plug it back in, or turn the breaker on. And just before I plug it in, I'll do this last assembly. I'll put the <clears throat> chopper blade back on. To the circulation motor shaft. <clears throat> then I'll put on the sub assembly for the for the sump. <clears throat> this part. And be aware there's a gasket on this one, a rubber gasket. Make sure the gasket is in place before you do the next part of the assembly. Put on the diverter. Make sure that's on there tight. It just pushes on. Put on the impeller. And remember, it's reverse threaded. So I'm just going to push it onto the shaft and then the Phillips head screw, I'm going to put it on 
counterclockwise or to <clears> the left and that actually tightens it so I'll, I'll hold the impeller <clears throat> and then zip it counterclockwise there we go and then we can put the filter back on <clears throat> tighten up all those screws Spray arm back on. So I'll turn to our left initially and then we'll turn it to the right, to your right. And we're going to feed it onto the clips. <clears throat> There's one in the back and one at the top. Just push in until it clicks. Push the top in until it clicks. There we go. I'm going to put on this little metal piece with a Phillips head screw to hold on the uh, the uh, line that feeds the upper spray arm. From the lower spray arm, and we're going to add two Phillips head screws to hold it on. There we go, last of the two screws. We got that on there tight. <clears throat> Put the baskets back in. So the upper one goes in at a, at a diagonal and then you flat, level it out and push it all the way back. Just pop in the bottom one. Power turned on. Make sure everything is tight and secure. And there we go. <clears throat> so back to working good again. And then we just have to put on the bottom plate. It has a couple of Phillips head screws holding it on. And we are done. Get the insulation back in. Here's the bottom plate and a few more screws. There we are, so thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.